In this segment, we will be looking at translation leukocyte buffers, or TLBs. TLBs are primarily a cache for page tables. You'll see why we need them and why they are very important uh, for performance purposes um, and how much we've come to rely on them. All hardware that we know of today do have TLBs. All right, so fundamentally, a TLB caches page table entries, and these page table entries are tagged by the virtual address of the page itself. So as I've shown here, uh, a typical page table entry cache uh, typically has about uh, 128 to 256 entries. Sometimes there may be even a level two that's shared, for example, in most Intel processors today. Um, note that the cache itself um, holds only the final translation. So when you have a tree uh, where there are multiple elements of page tables, um, you know, you go along multiple levels, the TLB holds this one. It holds the last entry that sits at the base of the root, right? So to look up any virtual address, um, this is the first step. You take the virtual page number and you go index into this cache. Uh, what it returns is the physical frame number but it also caches things about the permission of the page uh, itself. And once you get the physical page number, you concatenate that with the offset and you get the actual physical address that you issued to the system. And if there's no entry present in the TLB, then you'd have to look up the page table. Now you've converted uh, the memory access into a page table lookup and then the actual data access itself. And the page table lookup itself could look up multiple levels of caching in the page in the uh, page table tree. Okay, so what we've done is replace the page table tree, or we've added a cache for the page table tree itself, which caches the final uh, translation entity. And what it does is it's it bypasses all the tree lookups on the path of the average axis. So most accesses will look at the TLB as opposed to go look at the page table tree. Right. So the TLB is fundamentally a cache. Uh, it's similar to data caches. And so here is an analogy between a data cache um, and uh, a TLB. So if you look at a conventional data instruction cache, uh, they store memory words or data at the particular memory address. You index them by the memory address and you get out the actual data at the location. On a miss, uh, you access the next level in cache or main memory. Similarly, the TLB caches uh, VPN to PPN translations, right? And you index it by the virtual page number. The data that it provides is the physical page number. And on a miss, you go look up the slower uh, page table. So there are lots of different TLB organizations. Uh, we'll try to look at uh, what designs um, fundamentally make sense in the context of a processor. So first, it needs to be really fast because it's on the critical path of every memory access. So every access, data access that you do in, this, in your program also needs to look up the TLB in order to get the virtual to physical translation. Thus, um, in some way that adds to the access time or is critical for the access time. Okay. Uh, it also needs to be large enough to have fewer conflicts. Remember that it's a cache, it's uh, and so it's going to have a finite size. You need to ensure that it has very few conflicts because if you miss in the TLB, the penalty is extremely high because you got to go look at the page table and then go retrieve it at multiple levels in the tree itself. And so it's going to add a lot of cost to the overall uh, access. And now there's the inherent trade off. So if you want fewer conflicts, you want this points to larger um, page table, TLBs. So large TLBs. Okay. And to the first order of approximation, if you want it to be really fast, you want it to be small. Right? Fast means small. And Fewer misses means large. So now there's in um, these two things pull in the opposite direction. Typically, normally the level one TLBs are optimized for speed. 
uh, so that it, you don't add any latency to the cache itself. And the level two ones are optimized for being large so that you don't have, you have very few conflicts. So in reality, TLBs are typically small. Uh, like I said, it's about 128 to 512 entries. Um, they're not very big and can support much higher associated where you can throw in more ways in the cache itself without costing much performance to your host. TLBs um, can be fully associative or set associative. Normally they are made fully associative. That is if you have a hash, um, a fully associated one cache is one in which you can hash to any bucket. So you can use any bucket. You can go here, you can go here, any of these buckets, then that's known as a fully associated one. If you have a set associated one, then you can go to only one bucket in the hash table. So you don't get to use the other one. So you will hash into a specific bucket and you get to use only that. So one of the interesting questions is TLB right through or right back. So what happens when you make modification to the page table entries themselves? Okay, so this you need to be carefully think about because if you make them right back, then what if there's another TL, another uh, TLB in the system that's cached for translation? Then you're going to be in trouble because you've made the changes, but it's not visible to anyone else. Um, and they're typically right through, and this is to keep TLBs and page tables consistent like I just described. So if you want to make any modifications uh, to the translation itself, those are immediately reflected both in the TLB and the page table. If it reflects only in one, then you could possibly be in trouble. For example, what if you change the translation? So if you had a VPN X and it was pointing to Y, and then you came along and set X to Y prime, right? In such cases, you want the change to Y prime to reflect immediately. X and Y being virtual page numbers and Y being um, physical page numbers. More details. So in general, if you look at um, TLBs, the TLB hit typically leads to single cycle translation. TLB misses lead to access page uh, refills. TLBs are also known as um, MMUs. So there's a, the MMU component essentially uh, corresponds to the one that walks the page tables and reloads the TLB on a miss. Okay, so first you have the virtual address. You look at it if the TLB is cached. Uh, if yes, then you get the physical address and you move on. If no, then you have to try and do the translation. Uh, at this point, you essentially reload um, from the page table and you save the result in the TLB and then you retranslate. 